Hello and welcome to this week's Wild Spirits News. I'm Sibylla and today I'm going to tell you three steps for dialing up your happiness meter. Have you ever wondered why some people are happier than others? You might just think, duh, they're probably, they're probably rich and healthy, right? But the thing is that this assumption doesn't really hold up to research. Study after study has found out that people who consider themselves who perceive themselves as, as happy are no richer or no poorer or no genetically advantaged in the sense of that they don't get sick or they don't have a higher education level. There's no difference really. And there's no higher prevalence in people that are rich than in people that are actually really poor or middle class people. So the criteria for happiness seem to be a lot more complex and subtle than we tend to assume. And if you think of your own life, I'm sure there were periods of, of intense happiness that you had. And maybe, like when, if you're like most of us, these periods didn't really last. Have you ever thought why that is? Your mission today is to learn how to increase your capacity for happiness. Task one is called your happiness thermostat. Um, Abraham Lincoln once said, most folks are about as happy as they make their minds up to be. It's a very wise saying, but at the same time, it's not quite true because it's not only a matter of the mind. If it was just a matter of, of thinking, of mind, then I could tell you now, think yourself happier and the video would finish. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. I wish it was. In fact, it seems that most people have a certain happiness level that they either grow up with or it comes from their character or their genes or from habits or from or a, a mixture of all of the above or what happens to them and that there's a certain level it's like a thermostat level of happiness that they allow themselves to have so this works in both directions by the way if you get very sad then eventually in a healthy environment in eventually you will get back to your normal happiness level but also if you get particularly happy or particularly lucky or great things happen in your life, you'll be intensely happy, but eventually you will come back down to your normal level. Gay Hendricks calls this the upper limit. And by the way, if you want a book recommendations, a book recommendation, read The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. It's an amazing book and it deals with a lot of the things that I'm talking about in this very video. So this is an upper limit of happiness that you allow yourself to achieve. And even if you need to sabotage yourself, your subconsciously will always strive to get back to that setting, just like a thermostat setting that attempts to maintain the temperature in a room. So task one is for you to become aware of this. What is your happiness level, your subconscious happiness setting on your happiness thermostat? Task two is called three steps to change your happiness habits. Now, Changing and increasing your capacity for happiness is as difficult and as simple as changing that setting on your internal thermostat. It's as simple as it because that's, that's the entire process. You need to change your internal setting. But unfortunately, it's not as simple as an actual physical thermostat that regulates the temperature in a room where you just dial, uh, you know, you just dial it up. Unfortunately, it's not, it's not as simple with people but it is certainly possible. It does require a lot of persistence and um, you need to work on it long term and you need a bit of patience. But I'm going to give you three steps to get you started on that process. Step number one is called pursue your passion. You saw that one coming, didn't you? I mean, it's me. <laughs> Obviously, that's what I'm going to recommend, but there is a reason for this. I'm in the business of increasing people's happiness. And if you pursue your passion, you will, you will experience joy and you will be lit up. Remember, my definition of passion is not just any old hobby or interest that you might have. A passion is the thing that lights you up or the things, it can be plural, you can be multi-passionate, but it needs to really light you up and make you happy and joyful. And the more you prioritize your passion, the more time you spend, feeling lit up and joyful, the more you get used to that higher level of happiness. And that alone can serve 
to increase that setting, to dial up that setting on your inner thermostat. Step two is called the gratitude habit. You may have heard this elsewhere, and it's actually true. Gratitude brings you into, it brings you a very high vibration emotionally. It, it brings you into the same vibration that joy and love bring. So what I would suggest is that you make it a daily habit to write down, put it in writing, three or maybe five things or two, however many you can have it, uh, you can manage, things that you are grateful for. And do this, my suggestion would be every evening before you go to bed because then you have the whole day to look back on. And with some practice, you will always find something to be, to be grateful for. I mean, your life might be terrible right now. You might just go through loss and grief and all the rest, but you can always be grateful that the sun was shining that day. You can be grateful that you are alive and have a roof over your head. You will always find something to be grateful for. Now, the trick with this step is that you don't just write it down mechanically but that you then go over it and it doesn't it can be just one or two keywords that's fine but you go over it then and actually experience the feeling the emotion of gratitude that is the important bit you actually have to feel the gratitude so that's step number two and step number three three is called get coaching i know this sounds lame coming from a coach but there's a reason why i recommend this Coaching is the best method that I know of and the most effective and the most dramatically transformative for changing habits. And happiness, like I explained before, it's like a habit and you need to persist with it. And coaching is so good at keeping you, at, at helping you to stick with something for the required time, for the time it requires for this new habit, for this new happiness setting thermostat setting to stick and to become permanent. You are not doomed to one happiness or lack of happiness level all your life. You can increase it. It's a lot of work, but I'm telling you one thing, it is so worth it. Task number three is as usual to let me know. Hit the reply button and tell me where you stand in this happiness process. Are you going to put these three steps into, into practice or maybe just one or two of them? Just tell me what you're, where you stand and what you're going to do. I love talking to you in these emails and I will reply to every email. If you didn't get the link to the video in an email, that means you're not part of the Wild Spirits community yet and you should join us. Go to wildspiritscoaching.com and fill in the little form there. You can also do the free life audit on that page. If you fill in the form at the end of the life audit, one of the things that that will do is that it subscribes you to Wild Spirits News. The newsletter is 100% spam free. It's one email per week. That's it. You'll get lots of additional content, additional articles and information, recommendations of books and other resources. And sometimes you get exclusive offers that are exclusive to my subscribers that nobody else ever gets to see. So go to wildspiritscoaching.com and sign up. You can also Google Wild Spirits Coaching. That'll get you to the website as well. Thank you for watching.